But we'll start with something that is expected to uh, to, to figure <laughs> in the uh, Oscars contention, very possibly. It certainly would be the crowd pleasing vote, I would think, if if they were to go for one like this. Yeah. I think I could. It's, it's not not entirely unimaginable <laughs> that Hidden Figures could win some things. I don't think it's unimaginable at all. I think this is probably one of the rank outsiders, the Dark Horse. I think you it know. very well could be. Uh, yeah. So, uh, what's it all about? Well, Hidden Figures is uh, it's based on a true events. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, well, there there are some. Well, we'll, we'll get to we'll get we'll get to certain things around this film in a bit. But um, it's uh, basically the untold story of three women who were behind the the NASA uh, race to launch an astronaut into space because at the time they were losing the the space race to Russia, mm-hmm. and in the early sixties they wanted to launch astronaut John Glenn into space, and they did, and that led them to basically winning the space race in the end and putting a man on the moon and getting the space shuttle mm. up and running. So it's a story that deserved to be told and, you know, it's it's a relevant story and you can imagine that this was probably going to be quite a feel-good story. Mm-hmm. And it definitely is because, like, I, I, I just... You, you couldn't stop smiling the whole way through because it is a film which you feel might have been put into production as a response to last, to last, last year's... Yeah. yeah. You know, let's, like, it, it's got sequences of Oscar bait in there and it does seem like one of those like technical feel good films that you might want to you know put in there for consideration for that fact mm. because it is sort of a feel good like just a generally feel good story but i think that because it is up for an oscar and because it has got the adoration it deserves that that's important for me because i think this is a story that not only is entertaining in its own right and is anchored by three fantastic lead performances i think we should we should we should stress that the characters before we go any further we we need to stress the characters that are in there so you've got taraji p taraji p henson who i've not really seen anything in before but i do i do gather that she is a big deal yeah um she plays a mathematician who's fantastic with the numbers she's you know probably better than anybody else in the office of all the white men but she being a black woman is you know, not allowed to get that chance, not necessarily from the start anyway. Yeah. Have we even mentioned the fact that this is three black women? That's that, that's the big point yeah, of it, isn't three, it? That's the, re- that's the, big, the yeah. reason the story is kind of untold yeah. is because nobody has told it, because maybe NASA in the past... Systematic racism. Yeah, and maybe they want to kind of brush it under the carpet. This, this kind of... Certainly when you watch the film, you think like, NASA, really? You did this? This yeah. is unfair. <laughs> but obviously when they got the chance, it was great. And then you've got Janelle Monáe, who's an t- um, engineer. She wants to be an engineer, but she can't because she's not educated enough, because she's not being given the chance to be educated because she's a, a black and a woman. So that's the problem there as well. And you've got Octavia Spencer, who is... She wants to be a supervisor of the department, but she's not given the chance because they only offer it to white people. Yeah, so you've got so this a problem. big stopping block <laughs> that because they're both black and they're both women... Uh, all three of them are all black women um, that they're not given these opportunities even though they are these fantastic talents that you just sort of think well it's obvious but at the time it wasn't because people were racist <laughs> yeah and that's, that's, to be honest that's probably the tagline for the whole film really isn't yeah. it the we, people were racist we did bad things yeah. we're, well we're sorry you know. because I mean, from the very from the very first scene set in the, the present day mm. of where the story is set it's a story of them with their car broken down being pulled over by well being a police officer stops by them and says oh well I didn't know that NASA employed uh-huh. and then he sort of trails off and it's like that's where you come in yeah you know but like yeah I think the, the thing I liked about this film most is that it wasn't just uh, this was a really bad time and everyone in the world was racist because it's got Kevin Costner in there as like someone who was gen- who genuinely tries to help because he doesn't care about race at all he just literally wants everyone to get their stuff done immediately mm-hmm. Like I mean, there's a line when he, I mean, it's in the trailer when he when he knocks down the when he knocks down the coloured lady's sign yeah. for the toilets, and he literally says, "I, d- I don't care as long like, as long as you get back to your desk quickly." <laughs> Yeah. Toilets are everyone because an, I suppose an important detail in the film yeah. is the fact that the the, the 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 black women have to go to a different bathroom over Which a mile is away, half a mile away. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. they've got to, you know they've got they've uh-huh. got in the soaking wet. They take ages to get back to work. It's really like detrimental to the the whole NASA. And those sequences are, are humorous in, in two ways. The fact that obviously it, it's set to like a sort of jovial like well, it's set to Pharrell Williams, yeah, it's the most, Williams, most yeah. jovial person you can find. Yeah, and, and then while they're doing like it's 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 set like a comedy piece, but also it's a du- it's duality in that because you're like, well, this is just ridiculous that they have to run this far mm. just to relieve themselves you know i think, I think that, that, that's that's to a lot of the whole film and i know like there has been the controversy around this film by certain people who are saying oh you know it's just it, it's it's exaggerated completely and the certain things that haven't happened i mean uh, in the film but uh, she um, she was told uh, i mean she, uh, the real life version of taraji p henson's character was told that she didn't have to go to the color toilets mm. she could just use her own toilets so that is a fictionalized piece but again it's a film 
Yeah, you and know, it's gotta it's be a story. emphasized. It's, it, it's, yeah. it's worth bearing in mind to PG as well. Yeah. So this this is going to kind of play to a younger audience. Mm. You can't, you know. I think it's important that it's presented to these because there's other films that talk about racism, but not yeah. many of them talk about in it. And it's such a like you said jovial way. Mm. Obviously, it doesn't make a jovial thing out of the situation oh, yeah, of it, because it's very hard and it's very hard. It's very horrible that it ever ha- ever happened. Well, we there's plenty of scenes of intensity. I mean, there's that one scene where I mean, um, Taraji P. Henson's character spends the entire film basically being looked at for something as simple as having a cup of coffee, mm. and um, she and, gets her own pot. And then yeah, and eventually near the end, she basically just blows up with them, and it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's great to see because it, it, while it has got that that always that sense of fun and feel good factor about it, it's always got that underlying tone of you know, this is what the time was like, and even though there are fictionalised elements, it's a film, and it's a story about a time which was very real, mm-hmm. and you know, like, the segregation did happen, these things mostly did happen, like, there's not, there's a reason why, you know, and, and for the alt-right and people like that to, uh, yes. you know, let's not even go there, let's not go there, let's not give them the platform yeah. they don't deserve, uh-huh. um, I, it, I, it had me grinning from ear to ear. I think from the from the very moment it started, from having seen the trailer quite a lot of times, yeah. and knowing that I was going to really love it, and then sitting down, having it start, and meeting these three characters, the three of them have such a really, really good chemistry. Yeah, you know, Taraji P Henson is kind of the character we spend the most time with in the in the course of the film. But Janelle Monae equally brilliant, and we've got another film from her coming up shortly as well. So it's for, for for her, I think it's a real stand up for her because I've not really seen her act before. I know her music more than her performing, but she's really great. And Octavia Spencer obviously has been uh, Oscar nominated for Best Supporting Actress. Yeah. And I'd like to see her go and do it. I think it would be great for the film. It'd be great for her, and I think it would make my heart feel really happy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I really like it. The film, the film just works. Like it, it, oh, it does, yeah. it does nothing extraordinary, but what it does is tell tell a true story in a really, really well done way. Have it. It's got a cast of wonderful characters. It's got some real, really, really heartfelt moments, mm-hmm. and like it, it never, it never sort of undersells you to the point where there's no drama. I mean, because it is a true story, and uh, I was worried that like there might have been sort of a lot of boring science moments. I think it's, this? I think it's done in a really good way. We don't we don't yeah. see a lot of the chalkboard. Uh-huh. Like I, I like that we kind of yeah. When I forget the character names, but when because I saw it a few weeks ago, when Taraji P Henson's character is doing all the math stuff, it's kind of more about the cameras on her face rather than the maths board. Whereas yeah. some films might do it the way around. Mm-hmm. It's always locked on her. It's always about her. The, she has that glint in her eye when she knows she's got it. When she knows that she's got it, nobody else does. She has that mm-hmm. glint in her eye, and that's when us as an audience kind of go, she's got it, you know. And uh, it's just lovely. It's a film. And this is my first thought when I came out. I thought it's brilliant. I have to write this down. It's a film that Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin can hate together, because it's it's about hating uh, minorities and hating the Russians as well. So they can both just sit back and relax together and enjoy it together. Have a little bowl of popcorn and feel good about themselves. They, pr- um, <laughs> they probably won't. They probably. I, I don't. Well, I wouldn't. Want I think guess. their date nights probably get a bit more risky. Mm. You know. But yeah, uh, it's the, nothing. The, the message yeah. of the film is perfect. Like as I said, like especially for that younger audience, it shows how much you before you know strip away the whole like racism, segregation kind of thing. It just shows how much you accomplish when you can open your mind, because you can only do so much. But there's somebody else who can do it. So open your mind completely. Put all your prejudices aside, or or try not to be prejudiced at all, really, because that's kind of what I'd prefer in this day and age. Uh, there's already enough of that going on because you could miss out on something really great you've just got to give them the chance yeah and that applies to everyone not just race or gender or sexuality just the whole spectrum of everything just be nice to each other and that's course, the film yeah. that's the thing that this film brings just a happiness it kind of accepts that what they did was wrong but you can see that there has been progress made and yeah, of course. but we still have a long way to go i think you can see if you watch the news now we still have a long way to go but keep going in this sort of nice way about it and things will be okay well, exactly but I mean, when you've got characters in there like you know the, the snooty characters that Jim Parsons who isn't playing Sheldon no surprisingly enough and, and Kirsten Dunst have oh. they, you know they're, 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 they're in there but they're not outright the villains but you know you can forgive the, the cliche is that they are in a sense because it's just so fun well, and when thing, something is this yeah, much of I mean, an experience like cliche is a thing it, it, yeah. and, and it's played with broad strokes but I think yeah. that's fine I think it works in the film's favour mm-hmm. and when you've got a cast of characters that are this larger than life and three leads who get on amazingly it's just the little moments oh, yeah. like when, the, when they're playing cards and Janelle Mania's character's drunk like <laughs> yeah. when they're just like when, like, they, have the, when they have the dance party yeah, yeah it's just it's, a, it's little things like that you really sell you and get you behind because it is a two hour and a bit film but you're never bored one oh, bit because it, it didn't feel like that you're constantly just wanting them to get 
to, to get what they deserve because they are talented people and it's a great message for young women in general and, and young women especially who yeah. want to get into science and want to make a difference it's wonderful it's a, it's a genuinely great film really good like, really yeah. really good if you go and see one film uh, at the multiplex this week I'd make it Hidden Figures because it's just special it's there, special and there's a works. lot of good choices this week Mike. there is but I think of, of the new <laughs> of the new releases I would suggest that perhaps Hidden Figures is the one Oscar wise we've already sort of said that it could be a dark horse I think it'll play as the popular vote, I, I think, think I think as the as the sort of crowd pleasing favourite, this one ticks all the boxes. For me, this plays better as a feel good film than Lion did. I agree. Yes. Obviously, the fit, Lion I, wasn't exactly a feel good film until. I would like to think that if there was a sort of <coughs> if if the sort of revealed because they never do. Obviously, you have your winner. You sort of guess who becomes like yeah. second, third. I'd like to think that this played higher than Lion. I think this yeah. is this is a far better film mm-hmm. than Lion in terms of what I wanted from it anyway. A different story. Uh, Hidden Figures. Have you seen it? What did you think? That's not like Jeremy Johns there, didn't I it? I did, yeah. I was, I was even going to say a comment below. <laughs> we were going to punch the screen there. I was going to like punch the punch mic. Punch the mic, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> if you have seen it and you've got any thoughts, please do get in touch with us. LRJ Film Show is the place to get involved and we'll get through them next week. Uh, if you think it might stand a chance at the Oscars, perhaps, then drop us a tweet as well. We're yeah. also-